rest of the story. It was a late Sunday night. The pale winter moon had risen high in the Manhattan sky. The sounds of city life were growing ever more distant now, as though some magical mist had descended upon the town. At least that's how it seemed to Mr. Belline as he stood quietly at his window that he were gazing out over a vanishing brigadoon. And as so often occurred in the hush of those late hours, the ghosts of much earlier ones gathered about him. And tonight in particular, the gentle, smiling phantoms of a family called the O'Haras. How very far away and long ago was Mr. Belline's childhood on the Lower East Side and the tenement building at 330 Cherry Street and the Irish neighbors who, despite their poverty, managed to make a Christmas such as no palace had ever seen. And the further Mr. Villeen wandered down the byways of the past, the quieter the evening became, until it felt as though the darkness itself had held its breath in a perfectly still and silent night. And suddenly it was another time. Every year there had been such a splendid Christmas tree at the O'Hara apartment. Mr. Baleen's boyhood self would stare at the shining ornaments for hours. His parents did not particularly approve. The Baleen family were Jewish immigrants, you see. In fact, Father was a cantor in the local synagogue. Yet mostly because Mr. and Mrs. O'Hara and their children made Christmas seem such glorious fun, Mr. Belline, even long after he had left the steaming, teeming tenement on Cherry Street, would recall with great fondness a Jewish boy's Christmas times on the Lower East Side of New York. In his adult years, Mr. Belline business traveled. He never really minded it except when obligations kept him in Los Angeles over the holidays. It just didn't seem like Christmas, he said, with all of the palm trees and the sunshine. For there wasn't always would be a little corner of his heart reserved for that special season, a nostalgia that was born beneath a Christmas tree that had once sprouted in a slum. And at once the ghosts of Christmas's past danced away in the midst of their own forever, leaving the night perfectly still and silent as before. But then, soaring lightly out of the distant realms of space and time, came a melody, a haunting melisma of musical notes, eventually a procession of wistful words and poignant imagery accompanying it, and for breathless moments, Mr. Belline listened as the music and the words invented themselves. It was the most beautiful song he'd ever heard, he exclaimed under his breath, and yet he was not actually hearing it at all, nor was he writing it, but rather he was listening, intently hoping with all of his might to remember the magical echoes when the angel voices were still once more. The faint light of dawn was announcing Monday morning when at last Mr. Baleen emerged from his trance. And yet by then the music and the lyrics that had blossomed somehow from his nocturnal reverie were emblazoned on his brain and would soon thereafter find a home in the hearts and minds of millions of us. Most or all of your life, you've known and loved the simple tune and the eloquent words that combined to comprise one of the world's most popular of all songs. And yet now and henceforth, whenever you hear it, I hope you'll recall the O'Hara family of Cherry Street and the neighbor boy Israel Berlin, whose name appears on the sheet music as Irving Berlin. The sheet music to the enchanted carol called White Christmas. And now you know the rest of the story.